Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into the big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against our good friend, Lodric, and we are going to go through the combat resolution this time for January 10th and January 11th. Now, I'm sorry, I did put this video, I did put a video up, uh, yesterday, and unfortunately, that did not come with any sound, and I don't know, I mean, this it's probably a little more entertaining to hear me uh, at least say, oh gosh, I wish that didn't happen, uh, than otherwise. So I'm re-recording this, and unfortunately, uh, we're going to see the aftermath of the big battle of Port Blair, and we've got a few things, a few stragglers that are still out there in the Bay of Bengal, uh, and Lodric has a big carrier task force in area and that task force uh, gets busy let's put it that way uh, so it's not uh, it's not great that I have to watch this twice <laughs> I'd rather rather not have watched it once uh, but we're gonna jump right in here uh, let's select the combat save so again January 10th January 11th of this turn and we'll see what kind of damage Lodric can do and also see how we strike back a little bit this time uh, I do believe we get a sub or two uh, of the Japanese, and so we need to keep doing that and really whittle down his sub assets. Uh, that will open some things up for us. And we're off, and you can see uh, during the nighttime, he's coming into Papua New Guinea there as he starts to populate the island. He's already on the north side. Uh, he's taken Rabal, which isn't technically in Papua New Guinea, but just off the coast, uh, and is kind of the gateway into Port Moresby. So he's slowly taking a few of those uh, bases there, and will very soon uh, put some pressure on Australia itself, I would imagine. All right, here we are out here. We've got these task forces that are trying like hell to get out and away from the Battle of Port Blair. Uh, we do have a light cruiser on fire here, and we'll just watch this for a second, and then I'll escape through and we'll look at the results. Okay, we've got the cruiser, the Exeter, out here, so we do have a cruiser. He's got a cruiser and what appears to be two light cruisers and two destroyers. That's what I'm seeing anyway. And the Exeter is now on fire as well. Well, shit. Uh, you know, they got got shells falling all around the Exeter here. This is the Cape Town. Um just got to hope that the Exeter can hold on, they can disengage. It's only at 2,000 yards. I mean, that's not a whole lot of distance here. So they're in close, and maybe we can get a hit or two. We'll see. I certainly hope so. As you see the guns on the Cape Town fire away. Uh, that's the Isuzu out here. Again, that's a light cruiser. You can tell the difference. You know, the cruiser's a little bit bigger. A uh, light cruiser, Isuzu. Uh, now we're fighting on the or firing on the Kumano. Well, actually, he's firing on us. That's the guns. Uh, as the Cape Town, it looks like potentially gets hit again. Uh, it looks like we're getting. Yeah, uh, we backed off to 7,000 yards. Uh, we're trying to get out of there. Can we? Well, I don't think so. The Exeter is sunk. It took three torpedo hits. The Cape Town took a shell hit, one. Now, it was already on fire. We got no hits on, and you see the aircraft losses. Uh, a lot of times, the Allied cruisers and light cruisers carry some recon aircraft, so we did have a Walrus II that went down. So this is the aftermath of uh, the Battle of Port Blair as it continues to get worse and worse for us, the results out there. Hopefully we can get a few things out. Um, we do get a lot of new British naval assets over the next month, and so we can kind of rebuild the Indian fleet. Uh, but it's that, that was really, really unfortunate, uh, just the way the timing of all of that worked out. Uh, the cruiser, uh, Ioba, is out here, and it is bombarding Ambon as he starts to take some of these Dutch East Indies uh, bases, Ambon, Kendari, Makassar, uh, and up in this area, he'll start just taking these one by one. Ternate has already been taken when we talk about the major ones. Now, we do always have coastal guns at, at the 
you know, the bigger of these island bases, and hopefully we'll get a hit or two in, but it doesn't look like we got anything there. 38 casualties, we took some runway and airbase hits. We don't have anything there. Uh, not anymore, so it does, you know, ultimately... Uh, he can he can bombard that all he wants. I think we've just got a base force there. All right, now he this is again up here in Dutch New Guinea at the northern end of the island. He's landing some more forces out there. We don't have any troops up north. Uh, once he took the furthest north base i think we had a base force there uh, but there we just had nothing as the allies up there protecting uh new guinea all right he's unloading there and he will shortly take that base as he inches closer to what will eventually be a battle at port moresby i assume all right, we're retreating from enemy combat. Yes, we are. Uh, he's got two of his light, or uh, two of his major carriers out there at least. It could be three. And he's got several light carriers and carrier escorts that are carrying aircraft as well. Uh, so he's got plenty to put a hurt on us out here. We don't have anything that can match that. Uh, and unfortunately, we were trying to get planes into Colombo this very turn you can see they arrive here so i had transports coming in with 16 trop hurricanes uh those get destroyed here shortly unfortunately And here comes the Chinese bombing, but we're going to start off with the sweep, and so he's sweeping out over Luoyang to see if we have any cap we'll put up, and we do indeed, some, or I say some, uh, it looks like one I-15 there, it may have been two, uh, it was two, and one got destroyed, so his sweep was successful, at least taking out half of our air force at Luoyang. All right, now he's sweeping over Changsha. Just making sure he's seeing if we have any cap before uh, we or before he sends out any bombers. Okay, now he's going to bomb these poor souls that are out in the middle of the Malaysian Peninsula. They've been trying to make it down the peninsula for a long time. We did damage three planes there. I will say our anti-aircraft is becoming a little more effective. Uh, as time goes on here, uh, Luoyang, he sweeps over the top of that again. He sees nothing. Now he's got nine zeros that are coming over Chengchao. It looks like we got three I-15s up eventually there. And so the zeros sweep over and they destroy one of our I-15s. Now this time when I record... Um, my kind of recap and setup. I've already made two videos, actually. I do the entire U.S. West Coast, out to Pearl Harbor, down to New Zealand. Uh, we talk about a lot of stuff. All right. Uh, wow, okay. We actually uh, damaged five planes this time. Now, he took 200, and, or he, we took 214 casualties. He took five damaged planes. I mean, we'll see you just don't know because of fog of war how many of those may end up being an operational loss as they try to make it back to base uh, we'll see 18 casualties on this bombing run for the poor guys trying to get back to yanan still that has been one hell of a journey you could write a book and make make two movies out of their trek over the mountains back to yanan uh, 20 lilies in here into southeastern China and these groups uh, doesn't look like he found us or at least the bombs didn't strike where he wanted uh, he's bombing out here again uh, he has one damage plane we took 33 casualties there and we see bombing into southeastern China again 30 casualties reported on the ground 11 ands bombing this group just south of Nanyang. I'm just curious. Okay, he's bringing those in. We're estimating at 10,000 feet. He's actually bringing them in at 8,000 feet. If you uh, get into this game, really bombing runs, uh, people have play tested it. It seems that 8,000 feet is about the ideal bombing altitude. 
uh, 18 Sonia's here. Uh, we take 52 casualties. Again, he's at 8,000 feet. And you see how effective his bombing has been. So just let that be a note to you as you play the game that 8,000 feet is pretty optimal. Now that can depend on how strong you think the anti-aircraft is and whatnot, but uh, it looks like he's doing that over and over. Again, 8,000 feet, 8,000 feet. We take 12 casualties there. All right, he's bombing this group out here by Pakau or Pakoi, whichever it may be. That sounds a very English way of saying it, Pakoi. It's probably Pakau. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Six casualties reported there. Uh, he's sweeping with some Tojos, which are fighters, up over the top of Changsha just to see if we've got the Flying Tigers over in that area. All right, we're continuing to sight aircraft, getting reports of aircraft here, there, and everywhere. We've reported a lot of things out by Pearl Harbor. Now, you will get these phantom reports, right? Because we have a lot of missions running around Pearl Harbor, and sometimes our coast watchers or otherwise will call in and say, uh, you know, we saw a bunch of Japanese aircraft flying out here. Uh, it's usually not true in those kind of areas. 23 casualties on that bombing loss uh, for that group that is just southwest of uh, Luoyang and Cheng uh, Chengchao. All right, 12 Sonyas in here. Okay, now his carriers are going to get uh, to work. Um, he's bringing in 19 zeros. You see some vowels out here. We've got an AK. The Halzones is out here. Uh, that's a cargo ship. Uh, it's just off the coast here. It was. I was trying to get it back. The minute I knew that his stuff was out here, I say his stuff, his aircraft carriers were out here. We tried to get everything out of here we could. Uh, Let's put it this way. It didn't exactly work out that way. Uh, we damaged two planes, two of his planes. He gets a bomb hit in on the cargo Halzones. Uh, that's on fire. The cycleman is sunk, uh, the little KV. Uh, you know, he's really ripped through our KV force out here, which is, you know, they're really good for anti-sub work, obviously. Um, then we had the Arawa. Easy for me to say. That survives for now. The cop, the Cap Saint Jacques. Now that has got to be a French ship. It's got to be a French flag there. Uh, both of the APs get out alive. Uh, the AKL, the little one-point cargo ship, does have heavy damage after that hit. And now he's bombing directly into Colombo. And this was my worst nightmare. Uh, it just absolutely was the worst timing ever, and that is I was bringing cargo ships over here with planes on them, fighters, for this very circumstance, so that we would have cap up, and just the way the timing worked out, uh, yeah, they didn't make it. Uh, he had two Kates damaged. You can see here, Hurricane 2B Trops, 9 destroyed. Now, there were 16 total. Uh, I can tell you they all did get destroyed. Uh, we lose another K, well, we're going to lose another KV, the Hollyhawk, uh, and we lose an AK, an AMC, uh, and the AP Glen Artney is on fire. Just absolute uh, terrible, terrible timing. Uh, and as I always say about these things, is it that going to be enough, you know, is that going to turn the tide of the war? Well, I want the tide to turn, but is that going to lose the war force? No, but it's a lot of points, and it sets us back for getting an efficient or effective cap up over Colombo just to guard against this very circumstance. All right, he comes in here to Trincomalee with uh, some more bombers, the Cates, uh, with 14 zeros in escort. One was destroyed by Flak, um, the AM, so a, we lose a minesweeper. All right, well, in comparison, we'll we'll take that, I guess. Yeah, that uh, that that Colombo loss, this Battle of Port Blair has just turned into a fiasco uh, because of some of the aftermath of it. The original battle, we don't know if we got two of his cruisers, one of his cruisers, or none of his cruisers. We know we have a couple of cruisers on, or he has a couple of cruisers on fire, but... Ultimately, we're losing way too much uh, in this battle uh, as he's moved his carriers over by Colombo.
And again, it was just one more turn and I would have had cap up and it's just too bad. Uh, I should have been a little more careful with those, sent them to Bombay or otherwise and not straight into Colombo. I thought we could make it. Uh, these two day turns, you could move a long way. I mean, those were just on the edge of the map the other day uh, when we looked at the last combat resolution. And so you just got to be really careful if you're going to play two or three day turns because uh, his carriers can move a long ways. Okay, now he's into uh, Port of Princesa. These are just PT boats out here. Hey, we avoid uh, getting sunk. All right, he's going to bomb here into Cebu. Now, a lot of our troops out on these islands here are going to get starved out. There's just no way to get supply to them. Uh, 15 nails in. So to the extent he wants to bomb in there, okay. I mean, ultimately, those are not going to be good and effective fighting forces regardless of whether he bombs them or not. 15 sallies. Uh, again, he's coming in at 8,000 feet. Uh, 17 sallies there. Uh, one damage plane. He doesn't strike with any of his bombs. Lots of sightings now as we continue on. Okay, now back to his carriers. Uh, what the heck else do we have out here that could get sunk? Well, there's the Cape Town. Now, the Cape Town, obviously, we just had that surf surface battle. Uh, the cruiser the Cape Town was with got sunk. The Cape Town's still alive for now, but it's uh, four bomb hits. We damaged two planes. Bomb hits four. It's on fire. Heavy damage. Uh, it will go down. The Cape Town will be lost. And now he's going to bomb into Colombo again. Uh, and just clean up whatever didn't sink last time, including the Hollyhock, the Glen Artney, and this Minesweeper. It's just on heavy fire, but that will go down as well. And now he's going to hit this group uh, and try to clean that up uh, for what he didn't sink before. He gets the AP Felix, Felix Rousseau. The Halizones is sunk now. The Rousseau is on fire. The Arawa uh, heavy fires and the Cap Saint-Jacques takes three bomb hits and takes heavy damage. Now he's got, the, you see, it's like I said, it's just like the Death Star. It just, you know, it's blowing up planets out here. Uh, and then we had one little AP here out of that group that had tried to get out of Rangoon. That is the Rajula, the Rajula, or Rajula, yeah, Rajula. Torpedo hits three, and that is sunk as well. Now he's going to hit back into Trincomalee. See what kind of damage he can do there. Well, he hits a little local minesweeper. Devastating losses here at Colombo. Well, I say devastating. I don't want to overstate it, but uh, this is a this was a very bad result for us. We got a lot more on the way, but that's a lot of points to add up. I think it ends up adding up to you know once you put in the cruisers and whatnot, close to two hundred points. Um, which is really something. All right, the Cape Town's about to go down. The Arawa goes down. Uh, the Haruna is out here bombarding Davo. Uh, all right, I mean, it's tearing up the base there. We have a base force. I think we actually even have a little bit of infantry there. And now he is attacking this base right up here. It's it's Cabana Tuan. Sure. Uh, we had a force that was in Apari. It got trapped back there, and we've just been marching it back. We eventually took back this base because he moved everything over here to Clark Field uh, and down into Manila, but now he has taken that base back. I think we had 200, yeah, 253 men left out of that force that uh, eventually surrender there.
Okay, we got a ground attack. Now, I have brought a lot down here southwest of Changsha into this base. He would have to attack that across the river, obviously. Uh, this group got kicked out of Kukong, and it's just been, they've been getting attacked over and over and over again. You'll see they get ejected up into this hex. Uh, there's not a whole lot left of them. Uh, you can see the adjusted assault value, 592 to 3. He took 31 casualties. Wow. Uh, we took 1326. So that group has really gotten chewed up. All right. Uh, this is a little island out here south of Mindanao, and he takes that island as he starts his little island hopping through uh, the area south and west of the Philippines. Okay, now we're building up fortifications. So that was January 10th, a very poor turn for us because of the uh, all of the aftermath of the Battle of Port Blair. That did alert his carriers uh, that we had quite a bit of uh, assets that were still floating around out by Colombo. He very smartly got his carriers up there in a hurry and just ripped up some stuff. Mainly the big loss there were just the airplanes because if I would have gotten the hurricanes down on the ground, they could have gotten up in cap and maybe protected us or at the very least shot down some of his carrier planes. Uh, as it worked out, it was the worst possible timing. It's right when the uh, group got there to unload the airplanes and we lose 16 trops. Or hurricanes, if you, some people are, it's, uh, you know, they're hurricanes. Okay, we'll call them hurricanes. All right, these are some little PT boats out here at Porta Princesa. We just really had nowhere to take them or do anything to do with them. They're drawing a lot of fire from a big task force uh, that's not hitting. And so they're like little minnows out there uh, scattering and staying out of the line of fire somehow. That does not last. I, I think eventually they go down during this turn. Flooding aboard the Cape Town, no surprise there. I mean, it's going to go down one way or another. I think it ends up sinking, yeah, major flooding again. When you get multiple messages of major flooding, well, that's the third one. Uh, it's probably that ship's about to go down. Pro tip. All right, he continues unloading at that base at the northern end of New Guinea. Oh, we do. We have another ship out there? My goodness. <laughs> like, uh, so spare us. Okay, this is our anti-submarine work. A uh, couple of destroyers out here, maybe three. And we do get a hit on here submarine is taking on some water the dd porter out here so we may get a little joy finally with our anti-sub work now we identified he had a big group of subs right in this area so i've got all kinds of destroyers and destroyer minesweepers out here to counteract those subs and it looks like we got three hits on here so we did have three destroyers in this task force uh, they found the ssi2 and got three hits in the more you can whittle away at that Japanese submarine force, uh, the better you're going to have it. It's very hard for them to replace those as well. Okay, he spotted the Cape Town again. Yeah, we're seeing ships out on the u.s west coast and near lahaina you know again you just don't know fog of war um two zeros come in to sweep above cheng shaw now he's got 30 nels that are actually you know going north here to bomb uh this group that's uh, just been absolutely racked uh four nels damage though we'll take that 24 casualties reported 
All right, he's got 10 zeros that he's sweeping over Luoyang. And now more zeros over Cheng Chao. We do get some I-15s up in the air. Uh, they're probably not going to last long. We'll see. Uh, one destroyed I-15. We don't take out any of the zeros. Now he's uh, actually bombing this uh, group of PT boats out here at Porta Princesa. And they miss again. Boy, these guys, uh, they're taking up a lot of the Japanese uh, production of bombs. Okay, three Mabels in here. Uh, they don't hit target. Now this is the group that is southwest of Luoyang. Uh, we damage four planes there, but we do take 107 casualties. Now this group uh, has some good AA. We've already damaged like nine planes, uh, but they've taken about 300 casualties. All right, they're getting bombed again. Uh, this time they take no losses. We take 117 casualties. So we're up to about 500 casualties in that stack. Uh, this is the group uh, south of Nanyang, 11 ands. We take 29 casualties. We damage one plane. Now these guys are getting bombed yet again. They stuck their head out. They moved down here. The idea was to try to kind of surround his units here at Nanyang, cut off their supply. I'm not sure if we've been successful with that or not. Uh, I can tell you in the next turn, he's they're on the move, and they're moving this way, so we may have cut off their supply a little bit. Uh, two Ida's damaged. We took 19 casualties. And now 19 Sonyas, uh, we took 10 casualties there. He comes in with 26 planes here, uh, no losses. We take 18 casualties. Six more Lilies are going to hit that area, uh, no casualties there. Uh, back to Chang Shaw with a sweep with the Tojos, uh, nothing doing. He's running those at 16,000 feet, and it looks like he's running his zeros at 19,000 feet. That just gives you an idea of what Lodric thinks the best altitudes would be. Uh, he's bombing the Malaysian group again, 34 casualties out there. I can't believe they have any men left. All right, 16 Sallies. Uh, one damage Sally, they don't hit target. All right, we've got Japanese aircraft being spotted all over the place. They are everywhere. Nine Sonyas here into southeastern China. Uh, no Japanese losses, they don't hit target. Lots of sightings. All right, 10 zeros over Cheng Sha with the sweep. 16,000 feet this time. So he's running everything kind of between 15 and 20,000 feet in that area. Always good to know that uh, you ideally would like your your I'm sorry your fighters running at a higher altitude than that if you can. Unfortunately, many of our early aircraft uh, really only perform up to fifteen thousand feet at the best. All right, he's bombing into Cebu. We've got 26 Sallies. Uh, one damage Sally there. We took 48 casualties. 27 Ands, and these guys going trying to get back to Yan'an. Now he's got 14 Lilies. Uh, one damage plane, seven casualties in southeastern China there. 11 Sallies, 17 Ands, uh, 37 casualties reported. 
36 Ands, 27 Sallies, uh, 2 damaged Sallies, 14 casualties reported. Right, Sally's and Lily's here. Two damage Sally's, one damage Lily. Uh, we took 120 casualties. This group has been just bombed to smithereens over the turns. A lot of sightings. He's got so many aircraft. Uh, you know, every turn, he's got so many aircraft in the air. Uh, six ands here into southeastern China again. We take eight casualties there. Hey, his uh, carrier is back to try to hit something else. Uh, this is a big, big, big force coming in here. We have one little AKL and some destroyers. Gosh, let's hope these destroyers get out. Spoiler alert, they do. Uh, they don't get hit. We damage four planes. Um, and all he does here, I say all, I mean, you know, it, it's still a damage. We lose one AKL. That's got heavy damage. That will go down. The Sybarette, uh, the Aquana, Got two bomb hits, heavy fires. The Van Imhoff, two hits, on fire, heavy damage. That could have been a lot worse, uh, but we take some hits there, and now he's turning around. What's he going to try to hit here? Uh, the Dauntless. Oh, that's right. Okay. We have the CL Dauntless out here and the CL Enterprise. The Enterprise already had heavy damage. The Dauntless takes one bomb hit this time and has heavy fire. So two light cruisers out here. Uh, that's about all that's left of that surface fleet. All right, the Cape Town, major flooding, the DeRoyter sinks, the Aquana sinks, the Sybarette sinks. Uh, so a lot of those things that we were showing as damage. Now, this is a Dutch sub here. He has destroyers. I've got quite a few subs ringing Singapore uh, Dutch of the Dutch variety, which are actually very good. Um, he's out here searching for them, obviously. Uh, no hits on either side. The Cap Saint Jacques uh, is now being abandoned and it will sink. And so that carrier task force has just ripped through uh, the fleet that we had at Colombo. All right, now we're just going to expand our fortification. So that's pretty much the end of the turn. This is far and away our worst turn of the game. Uh, uh, you know, as I always say, and I don't mean it to sugarcoat anything, uh, you, you never want to lose any ships. Those ships uh, that we lost, other than the surface ship, the, the surface combat ships, those hurt. Uh, we do get replacements for that on the British side and soon. Um, so we can rebuild that fleet out at Colombo, Ceylon. Um, but the other ships aren't, you know, critical ships. You hate to lose 16 aircraft. You hate to lose some transports, whatever. We've got a lot of those. It's just a lot of points. And I keep saying this as he's building and building points, it's going to make it tougher and tougher for us to come back and get this win. Uh, now we're going to, uh, but <laughs> it, uh, logic has brought it. I wanted a spicy game for the channel and we certainly, certainly have that. This is going to be a good one. That's going to come right down to the end. Uh, you know, It'll come down to the atomic bombs in 1945, uh, I believe. You can see all of our arrivals now. Um, 
once again, uh, we'll go into the setup this time. We have got to bear down and make sure that we get this under control because he is building up a lot of points here. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Uh, I'll also, right after this, put up a my first setup video for the next turn. Uh, that will focus on the west coast of the U.S. and the off-map bases. Uh, then we'll move over to Pearl Harbor, New Zealand, etc. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one. I'm out.